Welcome to Cali Night Shift. This is Garage. Wasn't entirely sure at the conclusion of our Varukath campaign if I was going to move on to the second story realm, Arkalot. However, given the ongoing technical issues that I'm having and the forecast for my upcoming schedule uh, I decided to just go ahead and do it while I had some time still so as I said this is the second story realm that was released with the Eldritch Realms DLC for Age of Wonders 4 uh, where we return to Athla, one of the oldest worlds within the Astral Sea, uh, to stand against the sheer force of the Umbral Invasion. And it certainly seems like it is going to be very challenging, completely overrun by the Umbral Abyss, with a number of Umbral dwellings, and all three cities apparently are basically going to be uh, our adversaries, from what I can tell. Uh, we're going to play it on hard, which is the highest difficulty available. And see how this story concludes one way or another. Speaking of conclusion, your journey starts here. In terms of who we're going to prosecute this campaign with, I'm actually going to return to Omega Red. And this is for two reasons. The first being, uh, having now ascended, he has an ascended trait, which is this Pyre Bearer. And I've actually never played with an ascended ruler yet. So I'm interested to see how that actually works. And additionally, in the final battle, of the Tharukath campaign at the gate of Tharukath, uh, you will have seen, perhaps, uh, maybe not, due again to the technical issues I'm having recently with my videos, uh, that he actually routed, despite not being anywhere near death, uh, due to just huge morale debuffs that were placed on him. And I thought that was kind of humorous, um, that he basically, you know, uh, proved to be a coward in the final battle for freedom. And so I thought that this uh, ascended trait here, Pyre Bear, was actually quite fitting. Uh, basically, as I intend to play him with the intent that he basically die in every battle um, because he has resurgence and thus will be revived at the end as long as I win. And it gives us some benefits here, which are pretty significant when he dies. So, we're going to do that. And I also figured it, you know, reasonable to uh, use the same hero that we had escape from Tharukath to um, play this additional stage. Also, obviously, just due to the incoming new culture, incoming new society traits, uh, and things of that nature, I didn't really feel like it was worthwhile to invest the time in, um, you know, developing an entirely new uh, faction for a campaign this level um, that I may not ultimately finish, um, at least on camera, recorded in this nature. Obviously, I do play, in, I've played a number of campaigns. These aren't even all of them. These are just the ones I've chosen to keep in uh, my pantheon here. As you can see, at this time of recording, I've gone and actually played a uh, Eldritch Sovereign. Similar style of gameplay here um, as Omega Red. Not entirely the same, but similar. And so, yes, also my intent to finish this level, Arkalot, is it is actually the final achievement 
that I need to um, have unlocked them all, at least currently in Age of Wonders 4. It's kind of a running challenge, basically, as I unlock all the achieve achievements currently available. Then, of course, a new DLC drops with its own new set of achievements, and then I have to go and complete those in order to return to 100% completion. And, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. When the warnings from Therukath reached Magehaven, they were met in quick succession with disbelief, indecision, and then panic. The words of the impending invasion of Atla surged through the Astral Sea like a lightning bolt, and many a Godia native to Atla dropped everything to hurry back to the world's defense. Yet they were all doomed. Before strong defenses could be assembled, the Umbral Abyss opened its baleful maw. All across Athla, the scars of the Second Age burst asunder, and through the Umbral Gates, unleashed a plague of eldritch demons. Like locusts, this dark tide began to engulf all Athla in a war that knew only corruption and death. But the heroes of Athla stood strong. Champions and wizard kings, Shadrai and Covenant, they all fought with valor as one, united by this terrible foe. As they battled wave after wave of the Umbral Demons, one fear manifested itself in their minds. What if the worst was yet to come? Where was the leader of this invasion? Where was Lithel Nightweaver? At last, scouts returned from the inland of the once blessed continent with evil tidings. In Arcalot, where the elves of the First Age had set foot on Athla, Lithil was preparing a world-ending eldritch ritual. To confront her, many Godir marched on Arcalot, hidden in the heart of the Storm Peak Mountains. This is the tale of one such Godir. So here we are again. Omega Red takes to the field in a quest for redemption. So here we have a moment of respite. Mark a lot at last. Through clashing front lines and spreading umbral darkness, we have guided the flame water wardens into the eye of the storm. Hastily erected city of Darkspawn, is a testament to the loyalty of your people and a much welcomed shelter. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so pressing onwards toward Lithil and her eldritch forces. Looking behind, you reflect on the hardships on the journey to Arcalot. So we can rank up all while all our normal units gain enough experience to rank up three times. Uh, but we start with 50% of our maximum hit points. Umbral Flesh. Which we actually don't need due to our... Um, society trait. Underground Adaptation. Interesting, so we can basically go underground. Or we can get... One of my previous rulers. Interesting. It's probably lose all non-scout starting units. Wow, that's a very significant sacrifice. I don't know if he's really worth that. Start in the underground. I don't know if we're going to actually. I don't really like. It's funny because I'm 
really not a fan of the underground myself. Hmm. I definitely think it's going to be one of these two. I think we're just going to start with the experience. So, here we are, Shadow of the North. Zero of 100, Lithiel's Ritual Uncovered. While your people establish themselves in Darkspawn, you gaze already... Your gaze already turns northwards to the heart of the invasion. Yes, preparing the Eldritch Ritual. Learn more about her ritual and scout ahead before charging in. Okay. Interesting. So we could get some draft. Some gold. Some Imperium. Or some mana. Interesting. I mean, there's not much to do with the draft, right? We have, like, no gold. We have, like, no resources at all. Hmm. Interesting. This is tough because I don't really know anything about my situation here. I guess we'll do Imperium as hopefully we'll have the ability to actually build additional settlements so the Imperium will probably come in handy let's take a look at our surroundings okay here is our target it's a pretty significantly sized map All right, these don't seem super threatening. Oh, we have like no army though. Well, okay. Yeah, I think knowing this, the um, hero probably would have been worthwhile since one darter and one protector is not a particularly significant force. Well, it is what it is. Let's go ahead. Oh, these are locked until I reach those levels. That's fine. Okay. And like I said, I'm going to try and capitalize on uh, that ascension trait, which is... Wasn't it Warfare? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Yes. Okay, so it's already unlocked. So yeah, basically, we only start with 80 hit points. And that's fine. I'm going to try and use him something of like a glass cannon to do a ton of damage. And then blow up. Basically, and I think we're going to start this time with the tail swipe just for the ability to, yeah, cancel the defense modes. All right. So, we're back to square one here. And at this point, all we can really do is replenish. Yeah, our combat power is extremely low, which is fine. Let's go ahead and start with Legion of Zeal, I think. And yes, we need to do some scouting. Doesn't appear to be... Ah, there's a watchtower, so let's head in that direction. Of 
quite a few rulers, it would seem. All of them turned against us, from what I anticipate. But maybe not. Maybe there are some other Godir. Yes, here's our primal a primal culture quest, and then here is March of the Covenant. Alfred Elderstone. Oh, and the uh, Meandor from the uh, base game campaign. Yes, so there's some other go deer. Yes, let's Bane of the Covenant. Uh, yes, let's not worry about that. Let's just be pleasant. Okay. We may only delay the ritual by destroying her thralls before they can be sacrificed. Oh my goodness. Ten turns until the, the ritual ends. For every nine thralls destroyed, the ritual is delayed by one turn. Holy moly. So, let's look at this. Delay by killing any unit with Gloom Strider or Umbral Flesh before they can be sacrificed. When the ritual is completed, you lose the game. One turn delay for every nine thralls destroyed. And it counts me and the other go deer. So, that's good. At least they can contribute. But we are nonetheless literally on a clock. But my understanding is that, yeah, so like any of these types of creatures count so this is probably the most valuable one to destroy right now we literally have the same amount of combat power currently what do we have here bannerman war shaman and warrior well We could spend all our gold rushing that protector, which, I mean, two turns out of 10 is literally 20%. So maybe we just do that because we need to get, get moving. So, oh, I need to give yeah, give them a Whispering Stone, and let's go do this. Still a risky battle. That's fine. We, of course, can't lose anything. Here we go, nice shield. We have no use for currently, but that's okay. What is this? Another risky battle? Well, we need to be moving good 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 start okay and we got another level let's see here I think maybe now Sources. I mean, probably. How significant is this going to be right now, though? Probably not very significant. So let's. Uh, hmm. You know, I think we're going to go for the breath. Because this is just a nice, big AoE damage ability. Just wait. 
can annex a province. All right, so we cleared this. And what do we need to boost you? Forester? Let's do that. We need to focus on boosting whatever we can as much as possible. And they've moved, so let's end the turn. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, let's get a zealot on the way. Alright. Zealot is ready. Let's grab our watchtower. Not much to see. Okay, look. Good. So we bought ourselves another turn already. That's very good. High risk battle. So maybe we just replenish for this turn. Oh, but you know what? Actually, with a zealot, Maybe more feasible, still risky. I think we need to go for it. Good. <clears throat> okay, not bad. Actually, let's move up so we're closer here. End the turn. Oh, look at so we can kill so many that it actually pushes the ritual back above 10 turns. So that's good to know. Empire skill available. Not currently useful. Maybe once we uh, meet some free cities. Let's grab this mine. I think... Well, what are we building after this? Is it going to be the storehouse? Probably already boosted, though. What do we want to boost? Is it a quarry or a farm? I think we go for the quarry. Got space for one more unit. Let's check this out. We already have two protectors, despite being low on mana. I'm gonna go for another Zealot. Not only is it faster, but I think they're uh, more useful right now. Let's try and... Ooh, a tier 3. Okay, this could be unpleasant. Ah, we made it. Excellent. Very good. One turn to grow again. That's great. Okay, now the issue is none of these are going to give us any thrall deaths. So, what do we do now? <laughs> that is the question. What do we do now? Do we investigate this Umbral Abyss? Is it worth it? There's another watchtower there. Here's the next one over here. Ah, looks like there might be a free city up here. Let's go head towards there. And we need to get back in our domain to replenish. And actually, we need to get out and get an outpost put somewhere. Maybe over here. So we can make another city. Since we're looking at already having enough Imperium. Right. 
day five. Ah, uh, here we are. A candle in the dark. Peaceful arrival of Loremaster Oneron. Okay. May the light of the All Father shine upon you in this hour of darkness. Interesting. Reunification. Oh, when did the Archons convert you? Interesting. We only heard that the War of the Archons is not going well. Okay. We are part of the Gloom Watch now, tending the Dreamers. Children of the All Father, sent to bring an end to Urath's corruption. Okay. Interesting. Let's see. Well, let's just be positive. Looks like that's where we need to go. For that quest, the Flame of Revelation. We need to visit five soothing shrines within the Umbral Abyss. Okay. And hopefully, kill some more thralls along the way. Let's not worry about that right now. We need to annex. What is this? Tranquility pool. Okay. 420. We are 467. So I think with the zealot we'll be okay there. So. Let's do... Hmm. I think we start with the storehouse into the library. Oh, maybe it's the shrine. Yeah, let's try and get this mana income up a little bit. And let's annex this for a mine. And now, let's get this sell it. Low risk. Okay. Ah, uh, but we lose a zealot. Well, we're going to have to retry that. Wouldn't it surprise me if it's some instant kill ability on the troll? I think they have... Something like that, or maybe that's the Butcher Ogre I'm thinking of. Either way. Alright, so... We're gonna just run up. And blast these fools. Splitterling going up. Let's see, if I was right. No, they just have the net, yeah. No, nope, they're just, just tough dudes, which is fine. Let's get these zealots up. Protector to drop the shield wall. Darter bringing up the rear. Let's see how this goes. Oh, look at that. Our splitterling actually regenerated some life. I wonder why. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Now, let's... You know 
one. Let's actually attack first, since they're going to die from the tail bash, which is fine. There we go. Yes. I mean, technically, we don't have to kill our own splitterlings, but I think I would, at this point, I would rather they die. So I can get in here. Okay, we can't kill these guys. But we can kill one of these. And that's fine. Alright. Maybe. 65%. Do a little chip damage, sure. Okay. These are the protectors again. Let's just come here around the flank. And these zealots, yeah, we'll bring down here. Or er, that's a protector, excuse me. We'll just protect the rear there. Healing. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, actually, 87 mana. Let's save it for now. See how this goes. Okay. Is the net going to do it? No, good. Okay. Yes, now we're going to... Actually, how close are you to having... Oh, you don't have any stacks. Oh, because we haven't gotten that um, research yet. That's fine. Yep, let's heal this guy. <clears throat> We'll take the retaliation here. Yeah, get in here from behind. Let the zealot hammer these dudes. Although, can we eat? Yes, good. Yeah, it's a significant retaliation still. Ah. Can we finish the troll? Yes, good. All right. And actually, I think we just defend there. Nice fumbles. But yeah, I am glad we didn't lose any more legitimate HP. So let's put some hurt. Okay, cool. We're going to kill it. All right. Much better. Got some knowledge. That's good. Let's clear this. Low risk. Let's see if we can do it. Nope. Lost the zealot. Okay. Yeah, the attrition is certainly going to be a significant factor in this level, I think, given the timer that we're on. A lot of ranged here, so we need to be extremely careful, especially with only 12 hit points remaining on Omega Red, because we want him to blow up, but ideally while surrounded by enemies. Not getting sniped from afar. Okay. All right, so this looks pretty good. The question is... Yes, because when he blows up, it's a two hex radius. So we can come like here. Yeah, and just breathe on these fools. And if they want to kill him when he blows up, I think they'll all get hit. So who can we kill? Not really anybody, unfortunately. Where is our, yeah, disengaging shot? So if we move 
here. We can use this. Oh, that's strong. Good. All right, who do we want to die? I think these ones. Piglets aren't that aren't that much of a threat. Oh, they didn't really jump back. Oh, uh, maybe because they're up against that rock. So that was a bit of a mistake on my part. And yeah, they're they're definitely in trouble. Try and protect them a little bit. And I think they're at 49, they're at 25, yeah, so we heal here, run them around. Hopefully, we don't lose anything. Alright, looks like they're not being yeah, particularly tenacious in their focusing. That's fine. Looks like it's going to work out just fine. Let's see if we can get them to kill Omega Red, actually, because he will actually revive with more hit points. If they can kill him. Oh, they can't because they only have a shooting attack, huh? Yep, can't be used in zone of control. That's fine. Let's just kill him. That is what's important, simply that we did not lose any, any units. Now we'll replenish. We've got the magic material and the production node. And we get a level, which is great. I'm tempted to take this for the knowledge and the city stability. How are we looking? Yes, that's the Whispering Stone. Okay, we need to pre build something. I think I am going to take it. I think it's worthwhile. Right now. The Imperium certainly helps too. Yes, and now we're definitely getting to the point of having enough for a second settlement. Okay, so now I think it's the storehouse. In three turns, we probably go into our tier two. Legion of Zeal is complete. I guess we'll do the Primal Wolf communion. Can we afford it? Oh, it's 80. And it's going to crush our upkeep or our income. That's fine. It's powerful. So we'll take it. Let's. Here we go. Free city. Yes, Rat Pike. Okay. So they're not at war with us. That's cool. So we may actually have the opportunity to make use of these Order Empire traits. We're not going to grab that right now. And at this point, I think we're just going to withdraw the Whispering Stone and give it here to start the vassalization process. And uh, yeah, we're going down clock is ticking here so we need to be on our way hopefully our the other go deer can make some more progress yes look at that they killed seven this turn alone so that's pretty good that is pretty good good to know we've got some allies And yeah, we just need to head towards here, I think. I don't think there's any real point going down here 
right now. I mean, I could be wrong. Obviously, never played this level before, but uh, we'll see. And there's a watchtower, so let's head that way, anyways. One turn on the storehouse, and I think. just start on another protector and yeah maybe like here is where we build the outpost and then we just start expanding dark spawn away from it this way looks like there's some resource nodes right here there's a uh, uh, pastures right there so seems like a reasonable strategy All right, Legion of Zeal. Here we go. And we take a little bit of hit to our mana income, but I think the damage is worth it. Not going to go ahead on another Zealot yet. Okay, so good. One turn on the library, and then we can go for the Clan Lodge. That's perfect. What do we have here? Invest my Imperium. Yes, I know. I know. I actually can do that this turn so let's see maybe we just build it here so yeah we can get the wolf den immediately yeah the zealots are slowing us down because they don't have the forest walk so maybe just need to make comp actually let me start building the outpost now Okay, oh boy. So there's, okay, that'll help a lot. There's a full stack of six. Six thralls right there for us to slay. Quite a bit of force. Here we are. Yes. So. Uh, simply need to annex that into a city, which just by natural development of our outpost will happen. So that'll be fine. Can we... No, we can't get them back together. So that's fine. All right, we're running out of time here. The other Godir really carrying this counter right now all right so we can expand again We're going to build this what do we build after that part of me thinks it's the mana obelisk so I need another quarry Although I'd like to get a node, some sort of valuable node, if at all possible. Oh, there's gloom. Okay, well, again, thankfully it's not going to bother us. Alright, yeah, I think we go for the pastures. What can I get with two foresters? It's going to be the granary. That's fine. Just get a bunch of growth going on. And we won't queue it yet, though. And let's get another protector on the way. All right. This might actually be really useful. So let's do that. Get some production. 
trying to trade off all that food we're going to be getting uh, in exchange for production. All right, it looks like there's a bunch of stuff over here. So yes, hopefully, wow, that's a strong stack though, 758. So let's regroup as best we can. And we need to yeah, engage with some of this immediately, basically. And so I think we need to just start, well, actually, we should be getting a hero soon, right? Three turns. So maybe we just keep him there. We'll get us our hero, and then maybe he can come in here and start making some work in this Umbral Abyss. Yeah, okay. Look at there's our buddy running a scout around. All right, down to seven turns. Oh, here's Withering Glory, Serena. Okay. What's going on here? People talking, elven stuff. So, Serena and the Covenant gain 400 empire relations with each other. Okay, that's great. And we can just, like, not like each other. Well, that's fine. Let's just all be friends. A rivalry was declared. Really? This guy? What the hell did I do to you? That's weird. Alright, well. That's fine. I think I am going to get another Whispering Stone. So I can yeah, put one back in here. Got the outpost. There we go. Make a city. Let's go scouting. Holy moly. Big fire giant. That's cool. Just chill. All right. Well, that explains how some of these other go deer were just murking tons of thralls because, like, we've got, like, what, 12 right here, basically? There's six. And this guy probably doesn't count because he's a spirit. Yeah. But, like, all of these ones do. Sure. So, it's tougher. That's only 486, 765. So this is where we're going. For sure. Risky. Makes sense. We got some tier twos, but should be okay. Oh, lost a zealot. Now that makes sense. That's kind of what they do, right? They fight and die with uh, intense fervor. Alright, I like this. I like how they're moving up like that. Let's go say hello. Just blast these fools. There we go. Get our little splitterling up there. Our actual force just kind of chilling. And let's see how this goes. Oh, wow, that was a lot of damage. Okay, so I think we're going to witness. Yep, there he goes. Blows up. People start burning. Yep, getting a bunch of stacks of burning there. Okay, good. Look at that. Condemned and burning. These guys got condemned, but no burning. So that's pretty good. 
and he's going to re, um, respawn with 50% of his health uh, once we finish this battle. So that's pretty good. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, sure, let's kill these guys. That's good. Nice bit of damage there. So we will get a small retaliation here, but that seems fine. Let's see if we can finish these guys. We can. Good. Good, good, good. And yeah, we just keep beaten down on these fools. Yeah, those warlocks are definitely like the most significant threat for sure. So let's go attack them. <laughs> Resisted the uh, condemned. Okay. Can we finish them? Nope. Okay, these guys are going to be a pain. That's fine. Nice. Let's eat some stuff. Pin both of these. But these are the ones we want to focus. Just because of their damage output. And we can even get in back here, so that's good. Good, good, good. Yeah, nothing they can do. It is over now. Good. Alright, and so there we have you. Yeah, so Mega Red is back. I wonder if he gets experience um, when he dies and comes back at the end of combat. That is an interesting question. Let's see how much he has. Where is it? Can I see with him? Yeah, it's right here, this bar. Oh, it doesn't really, doesn't give it a numerical value, so we'll just have to pay attention. And that is the way that he redeems himself for being a coward in the previous campaign. Now that is, yeah, far more powerful than what we have here. Need to be selective about what we attack, obviously. So maybe we just... It looks like we're going to have to wait, yes. But that's okay. What do we have here? Yes, we are upgrading into a city. These protectors are just going to chill. Let's, uh... Do one more, I think, and we can get a zealot started. Oh, no, we can't because we're going to do... Well, yeah, I think getting another zealot right now is more important than giving the two zealots we currently have the primal wolf communion. So let's do that because we are going to get a new hero in two turns. What do we have here? Yes, excavation. All right. Chill there. And the turn. That was a pretty good amount, right? How many thralls did we kill? It was all six. Yeah, now we're up to nine turns again. That's good. Fanatical workforce is complete, so let's just do the condemnation. Let's summon our zealot. Now I think we'll go ahead and do this. 90 mana is a lot, but I think it's worthwhile. Okay, one turn for this. And then I think we might actually just go straight into the obelisk, despite being not boosted. It depends, though, because we have growth in two turns, so maybe we will. Maybe we will wait. So let's go in here. 
All right, this is what we're looking for, these soothing shrines. That's cool. Two stack. Should be able to take it out. Is this going to count as a thrall? No, it didn't. So they're not thralls. They're just normal demons. All right, we got our materium aspect again. So that's cool. Ancient Governor 2. More knowledge and city stability. Quickened Breath might be good. Fighting might be good. Wolf Primal Communion might be good. It's hard to say because he doesn't really survive that long. Let's go and check Dark Spawn again. How are we doing with stability? We are neutral. And I think that's only going to get worse. We'll just rush that. Yes, one turn for growth, so I think it is going to be a quarry and into the mana obelisk. Um, I think I will get the ancient governor just for more knowledge, more stability. I think it's worthwhile. These guys can just chill. Hero next turn, I believe. All right, so where do we go from here on the world map? Maybe down to this watchtower. And I guess let's look at our diplomacy since we apparently... Oh, there we go. Had a bit of a stutter there. We apparently have to care about these guys. I don't really have the money uh, to be pleasant with them. Oh, you know what? Is there anybody? Yes, yeah, Serena. Maybe she'll give me a wizard's bond. Good. Okay, I don't think anybody else will. No. Oh, maybe. I don't have the gold for that. He won't, so that's all we got for now. Okay. So yeah, I'm not sure about these Umbral Abysses because I don't think the Thralls are in the abyss. It's only these manipulated, you know, marauders or altered or whatever you want to call them that count. Yes, here we go, hero. Let's see what we can do here. Shield, polearm, shock, and fighter gain one defense. Not bad. And a beast trainer. Sure, let's go with this guy. Nice uh, charge strike. That's cool. 150 gold. We can afford that. Good. Now we've got another stack. Basically. 381. Okay. Should be sufficient. So let's go immediately try and take care of those dudes down there. Yes. So we need quarry. And I think four turns till we grow. Maybe we just grab this one because it gives us a little, a little bit more knowledge too. This one also gives us draft because of the forest, but because of the gloom here, we get a little knowledge. And mana obelisk. All right, time for a new tome. So I think in our previous K 
campaign, we took Tome of Pyromancy, which I think we're just going to stick with. Again, because we're going, I, I mean, we're basically going to go down the same path, I think, where we do Order Affinity and Chaos Affinity uh, in order to get fire damage, and spirit damage, and maximize that. And I don't think the Tome of Faith is really going to give us any benefit, but let's check. Okay, we could do some Allegiance tricks. We could get some Replenishment with the Chaplain. Faithful. Yeah, I don't think it is really what we're looking for. So we'll just stick with the old reliable. And I think it's going to be searing blades for sure. It's going to give us a lot of value. Although we are going to need a lot of mana. Cool. Alright, so we visit a soothing shrine. There's an ancient stone tablet. While examining its engravings, the following message resonates in your mind. So in the days before, the Andylan raged and the Archons waged their war. In the world prison. Oh, Grexilus. Okay. That's where the, I believe, the base game campaign completed was on the realm of Grexilus. The Archons left a custodian to guard the secrets which lie buried here. Okay. Irith of the Scrying Fountain foresaw the aftermath of Endylon exile and was and it was ill. The great nemesis of the Archons, okay, which is Urath. Interesting. All right, we continue the Pilgrim's Path. This is very strong. 632 to 794. We would get a couple of Thrall kills, I think. Yes, these are Umbral Thralls. Although, I'm not entirely confident in our ability to defeat that. All right, well, we just hit an hour, and given the circumstances, I'm going to conclude this episode at this time. We'll continue on in the next episode, um, where I may or may not engage with this Marauder Guard, which is a high-risk battle. We have seven turns currently uh, remaining before we lose the game, which will continue to uh, decrease if we don't find some more Thralls and kill them. Of this stack, two of them appear to be Thralls. So, with that being said, thank you for watching Kelly Nightshift. This is Garage. And until next time, take it easy.